Welcome to this session on AI and Kubernetes, a winning combination for modern application development. How many of you were at KubeCon last week? Anyone here also at KubeCon last week? Oh, OK. So we had some great announcements at KubeCon uh, last week. And obviously, AI uh, really dominated the conversation, even at the Kubernetes conference. Well, that's because there is something to this combination, right? And we have a fabulous team here today uh, presenting with me to share exactly why. So I'm Kamala Desika, and we'll start the session with an introduction to uh, in what is an intelligent application and why Kubernetes, which is traditionally used for cloud native applications uh, that all of you have been uh, using already, uh, is the way to go when also building intelligent applications. And uh, then, of course, run you through some of the exciting announcements uh, that we have saved for you just for Ignite uh, and all the ways in which we're making it easier for AKS customers to get in on the AI momentum. All right, let's get into it. So AI and its capabilities are top of mind for our customers who want to capitalize on this exceptional momentum that we're all experiencing. But ultimately, for your end users, that distinctive differentiated experience is still going to be through the app. Whether it's an internal application or an external application or something that you've already built or are conceiving of, altogether entirely new. So current generative AI and other technologies actually have a potential to absorb up to 70% of the employee's time today and create trillions of dollars of value across industries. Innovations like personal re personalized recommendations, connected smart products, information discovery, fraud detection, these are all categories that uh, have traditionally uh, been deployed even as modern applications. And some of you may have uh, deployed some of these cloud native applications as part of the work that you've already done. You may even have added AI-powered uh, classification, prediction, optimization into these applications before. But generative AI really takes this a step further. You can generate artifacts such as video, add narrative, uh, do training, designs, schematics. All of this type of capability now can be deployed along with all of the automation and optimization that you have always enjoyed with cloud native applications. So what are intelligent apps? Intelligent apps today are combining cloud native application development with cloud scale data, adding predictive or generative AI to create these highly differentiated digital experiences for end users, your end users. And Azure really is the only cloud today that's bringing together capabilities for modern application development, pulling together open source innovation, cloud scale data, and AI all in one place. So building new applications like intelligent applications isn't the only way to differentiate or take advantage of the era of AI. Modernizing applications and your data to cloud services is often the first step before adding cloud capabilities uh, and new value to your uh, uh, app, existing app investments with, uh, with AI. In fact, this is the strategy we applied for our own flagship applications like uh, Microsoft 365, Bing, Teams, Xbox, uh, games like Forza. And then we proceeded to apply generative AI-enabled features uh, like, say, GitHub Copilot. So there are really different ways to get started here. And in terms of adding contrast to perhaps a more experienced, established company, uh, you can contrast that with OpenAI, who are also um, Azure Kubernetes customers and, they've, and Cosmos DB, and they have used um, Azure products for the seamless ramp that they uh, had despite the unprecedented volumes, uh, traffic volumes on their service. So if you're an AKS customer today, you're in great company. 
Now, this is such a classic example, the kind of growth curve that OpenAI experienced for why application teams are choosing cloud-native platforms, with Kubernetes really being the de facto here. They can quickly adapt to changing demands, as we saw with OpenAI, and efficiently manage really important aspects of running uh, an application throughout its lifetime uh, with all of the important things like application security, the ability of the platform itself uh, to self-correct, to bring that extra stability, offer system insights uh, for issue resolution, and make it really easy to apply patches for all those pesky CVEs that are coming at us all the time uh, to do updates as you iterate on your application uh, quite easily. Uh, and that's a lot of goodness for all you ops folks out there. Well, let's not forget the devs. These platforms actually enable developers to leverage the benefits of containerization uh, for microservices architectures, as well as stateful workloads, uh, which sometimes we, we forget that you can actually run on Kubernetes. Uh, and they can use their favorite CI CD tool to go straight from their code in GitHub through a secure software supply chain that you can make using um, GitHub Actions, GitHub, uh, GitHub um, Advanced Security, and land your application on AKS, leveraging all the built-in easy uh, blue-green deploy capabilities in Kubernetes without sacrificing uptime for your application. So there's so much goodness, in fact, with AKS that developers have improved their productivity by 50% and reallocated their time to other value-added activities within their business. And with that, actually, developers are actually being onboarded faster and staying longer with their employers because they're happy. Uh, and for those for whom uptime is actually a real concern, they're enjoying a 65% decrease uh, in the number and severity of their outages. So I'm going to hand off right now to my colleague, uh, George Palma, who's going to take you through some amazing AKS announcements, all the new things that we have for you. Uh, but first, here's uh, Cariad, one of our customers, uh, who, which is the software development arm for Volkswagen uh, for all of the Volkswagen Group brands. We're very proud of our partnership with them. So here they are on video. The Volkswagen Group is one of the largest automotive groups on this planet. And Carriot is the in-house tech um, partner of all VW Group brands. And we basically create the software-defined vehicle for the new era. We provide to roughly 800 developers across Carriot for more than 200 products on our platform. All of these vehicle-oriented services are running on the platform. The Azure Kubernetes service is our central offering of our carrier service platform. IKS offers a simple solution to easily develop applications without the required know-how to address Kubernetes-specific options and still maintaining cost efficiency and reliability. Kubernetes is also a very future-proof technology. We were able to go from a few instances to a few hundred without any uh, intervention from our platform team. We can scale on-demand or on-load situations which we may anticipate or even not anticipate. Our development teams are now much faster and even new applications can be onboarded uh, very fast on our platform. For us, uh, Azure and specifically AKS is one piece of the greater puzzle, giving us a competitive advantage for the Volkswagen Group. Wow, I'm always amazed at things that our users and partners are doing, uh, like Carriad and the VW Group. And we really want to empower all our users and all of you to really achieve more, regardless of which time you experience at which stage of the journey, as Kamala mentioned, for modernization you're in, um, and also how much you might have in terms of Kubernetes skill and experience. We've been really hard at work to create a set of opinionated and unified experiences that work end-to-end -end for both developers and operations to actually allow you to focus on the outcomes that matter and really be productive with Kubernetes. You can start all the way from your code, be it an existing application or a new project, and actually, without any Kubernetes knowledge, use something like Draft to automatically bootstrap your application, get your you know, Docker file and Kubernetes manifest that you might really not know how to produce now. Maybe some of your teams do, maybe some don't, and you can really bridge that gap between them using tools like Draft, be it on VS Code or the Azure portal 
or anywhere you want through the CLI option. You can then have drafts create pipelines for you or workflows in GitHub directly so that you actually create a pipeline for each microservice and each application that you're dealing with. And you do that leveraging the GitHub actions that we actually create and support for all of Kubernetes, be it for, for example, retrieving credentials securely or for deploying applications on the app side, but also to create clusters and manage them effic efficiently, if you want so, on the ops side. Once you have that pipeline that draft automatically created for you, you can now very easily target the newly generally available uh, Azure Kubernetes Fleet Manager to actually deploy that application to the world in multiple Kubernetes clusters in whichever region is closer to your users, in one of the more than 65 regions that Azure has, and AKS is in all of them. You might also want to deploy to the edge, and you can actually leverage AKS hybrid options to deploy near to actually your be a point of sale or to where your users are through Azure Arc. But running and deploying intelligent applications is part of that journey. And more than that, we also want to enable you and want to, as Scott mentioned this morning and as Satya mentioned yesterday, we want to really be the computer that powers and fuels this AI revolution. And Kubernetes is a great platform to do just that. We've been partnering with a lot of our teams in Azure, such as the Azure ML team, to enable you to run, to train, deploy models in Kubernetes efficiently in leveraging the Azure machine learning pipelines and tool sets. You can very efficiently just use this in an existing cluster or a new fully dedicated cluster just for ML and share it with other applications and other teams that you might have there and really have great cost efficiency and effectiveness for your business. But what if you actually want to have one of the open source models that Satya mentioned yesterday. Uh, you might want to use you know, Llama or Falcon or Hugging Face, any of the many out there. You might want to customize them. You might want to run them and take leverage, for example, of confidential infrastructure for specific privacy requirements uh, or specific regulations. In those cases, Kubernetes is still a fantastic platform for you. But you might find yourself looking into, OK, what is the GPU that I'm going to use? How am I going to run this inference? How am I going to expose now this endpoint to my application? Um, and the time that you take, is this model that I want to use that my data science team is doing and building for me, uh, even containerized? Do they know what containerizing a model looks like? And now you have a gap here. And so we're really, really happy to have been working with a lot of our customers and partners and teams inside of Microsoft as well to announce the AI toolchain operator add-on for AKS. This is based out of an open source project uh, called the Kubernetes AI toolchain operator, or Kaito. And it essentially is an operator that we fully manage for you that will enable you to go from those tasks that can take weeks at best to just a few minutes, having hosted models for you from a slew of open source models that you can choose from, and even your own that you can bring in but also pick up the infrastructure for you or the one that you select and run the model against any possible infrastructure uh, that that region has. And more than that, then automatically expose an endpoint for your application, all of which in a question of minutes. Now, I know a lot of you probably, um, even watching online and on demand, uh, maybe you didn't choose this session. You chose Mark Russ's and Brendan's session, which is happening now. And I'm going to show you why that was a mistake. You, you really are on the right session now, so let's, let's have some fun. So I'm now going to take on the, the let's say, the, the mantle of the Contoso Pet Supplies team. And my team um, owns this application, which is kind of this marketplace for um, pet supplies for everything that your pet needs. And I was tasked with two things. George, I need to have my application go worldwide. This has been a terrific success. We need this deploy worldwide. And two, we need to do a better job to support our application uh, admins that own this application and from a business perspective to actually add new products into it. It's now a bit cumbersome. They need to manually go add products, create you know, their, their own descriptions and everything. And I'm sure that we can actually leverage AI to make these tasks much easier and much better. And so my team very quickly bootstrapped a new microservice, that AI service, and used OpenAI services to super quickly get automatic generation of descriptions. 
our data science teams at Contoso, at the same time, were optimizing a Falcon 7B model to actually create the best possible descriptions that you could have for our uh, pet supplies, including our new uh, channel, which was health uh, supplies for pets. And that Falcon 7B model is really optimized for description of the, this new slate of products that we have. So, two things, deploy worldwide, quickly integrate and deploy um, across the world to cases like um, different regions and different AKS clusters, and also empower our uh, business admins to be more productive. Let's see how quickly we can do this, shall we? Let's have some fun here. So this is our pet store. This is our pet supplies. And you can see basically uh, how fantastic this application is, and this is our admin portal where you'd have to manually add um, new products and write their descriptions and do that. Now, in the meantime, I've actually created a fleet manager and two clusters in that fleet manager, which are um, these two clusters that you see here, two AKS clusters, very standard, using presets, and they're in West US and East US. I went on to run the automated deployments pipeline into all my microservices so far, except my new AI microservice, and I'm gonna show you by doing that for the last microservice, how I basically did it for all of them, because it's the exact same steps, and you'll see how easy it is to actually get this deployed worldwide in a few clicks. Draft is the tool that powers automated deployments under the covers, and actually can bootstrap, as I mentioned, Docker files for you, it can bootstrap manifests, or you can select your own. So you can be at any stage of your journey in Kubernetes. You might already have Docker files, so you can reuse them. You might already have manifests, so you can tweak them or reuse them here. Or you might need help, and Draft will be there to help you. You can go on and select all the properties you need for your new service. It's basically on GitHub, same as the other microservices for our pet supplies. And once you're happy and then selecting all your manifests and everything you do, what this will actually do is create the deployment for you, create the pipeline, the manifests, and also the connection to OpenAI services very, very easily leveraging workload identity. All these in this very short number of clicks that you're seeing right now. Once you're done, you can just review and create. This will generate that pull request for you that contains the workflow, leverages the GitHub actions that I mentioned, has all the manifests, the Docker file, and a connection to OpenAI services. So really, really quickly, I was able to bootstrap my AI microservice and add it to uh, my application in my, let's say, dev cluster, for example. You could really repeat this process and actually get a pipeline for your staging environments or for your production environments separately, maybe different branches or similar. Once that uh, PR is merged, the pipeline runs and you can actually see the service is being deployed and finishes deploying. So you can actually go in and have a much better life now as an admin because you can add some hints and just ask your assistant that is now using OpenAI to just generate the description for you. Not too bad, but again, remember, our data science team has actually been uh, optimizing a model that we now host, which is this Falcon 7B model. And so we're gonna use the AI toolchain operator, and we're gonna just give this simple file. And this simple file will get our model deployed, will run inference of that model in this cluster, will provision that VM for us, and the only thing we need to do is deploy that file, and probably, yeah, go to our application, change the endpoint, to this workspace falcon 7 b slash chat, which is an endpoint that Kaito will generate automatically for you once the inference is finished. So you can just, once again, we commit, we push, these two files are added, and you can actually now go into, uh, as soon as it finishes, you can go and check on your cluster that any of them, let's, let's pick one of them. And if you jump to workloads, notice how you have that workspace Falcon right at the bottom, together with your AI service. It's completed, it's happy. You can actually go to the services. This is actually where your cluster service is exposed so that now your application, your, our AI microservice uses this one instead of uh, open AI services so that it has that optimized model from our data science team. And you can actually see that it generated magically, seemingly, a notepool for you and a new VM exactly with GPUs. You could abstract this and let the um, Kaito essentially select the best GPU that you can find there or anything more. 
And if we go back to our application and check for our new you know, set of products, in this case, multivitamins, um, supplements for animals, it's gonna be big, trust me. And you can just ask the AI assistant and you'll get a much bigger and uh, adequate description for this product. So, not too bad for a day's work, except we did it in a few minutes. So, let's recap a little bit. We quickly bootstrap the service. We leverage a lot of things under the covers that I'm gonna cover. So Kite does a lot of magic for you. But what's that magic? So firstly, it's naturally using um, automatic uh, creation of VMs. That's actually a new feature that we're proud to announce, which is Node Auto Provision. It's also doing super fast pooling of images. That Falcon 7B model has almost 100 gigs in this current form, and it deployed in that speed that you saw. That is thanks to Artifact Streaming, another of our announcements today. And we leveraged the best, latest and greatest from Azure and its GPU uh, capabilities that Satya and Scott talked about yesterday and today to, to run inference in that model as fast as absolutely possible and get that for our application. Out of provision, you can actually use it for anything. It's not just under Kaito and not just for running models. You can actually use it for all of your applications. It will automatically further bin pack your environments to ensure that your nodes, your VMs are optimized and are utilized to the fullest to ensure that your costs are as low as possible. Moreover, you don't actually need to create any infrastructure. You can just deploy uh, any application, requests and limits, or use our automated deployments, and it will actually create the VMs that are adequate for the current and new workloads that go to that cluster. We're super excited about this. It's actually based on the open source Carpenter project that we just announced last week at KubeCon, and I definitely recommend you to check that in our AKS community YouTube channel if you haven't attended any KubeCon session or our pre-day, because you're gonna have a lot of cool demos around Carpenter and Node Auto Provision as well as Artifact Streaming there. Artifact Streaming is something out of science fiction, basically. You are literally moving from images of hundreds of gigs for things like uh, big models or, ben or workbenches, and you actually get them, if you do nothing, with at least 15% improvement. The image you just saw had over 90% improvement. It depends a bit on the workflow, because what we're leveraging is new packaging for the container images that are, uh, we're partnered with the ACR team to do. They do the automatic conversion, and we're leveraging lazy, pooly techno lazy pooling technology that actually allows the containers to start even before all layers are finished pooling. So you get things that typically would take six minutes, taking six seconds to start, which is exactly what you saw there. You might not even see, but there's actually a little bar over there, uh, the dark purple one, that's actually how fast it became, from 100 seconds or 400 seconds on larger images, all the way to five to 10 seconds. So the scale speed that you get here, the optimization you do is absolutely staggering. But we're not done yet. We actually, if you notice, yeah, we deployed worldwide, we trained a new model, we did the inference there, it was really cool, but at the end, I bet a lot of you like, felt short because you were using an IP. What was the deal with that? So we're really happy to actually announce the general availability of our app routing add-on, uh, which has been uh, amazing to partner with a lot of you uh, that are already running this in production today to power your applications. It has a suite that includes an ingress controller that we deploy and automatically scale and maintain for you. It has DNS integration for both Azure DNS, private DNS, or your own. And it also provides integration to your own certificates that you can bring in. So if we actually go back into our application, let's actually get it done. The day's not over, the session's not over, and we're actually gonna give it some DNS names and some certificates. So it's as simple as going to our service that we just deployed and just right click, add ingress. You can also add it at the top, but to me this feels a lot more natural. I just go right click, add ingress. It detects that app routing is not deployed, so it just deploys it for you. You don't really need to know anything of what's happening behind. Again, your teams can have different levels, different skill sets at this point, and they might actually be learning more and more about Kubernetes. You just need to give it a name now, our good old pet supply. I can select Key Vault. Now I'm a bit lazy, so I actually use a self-signed certificate, as you do for dev environments, and so my browser is likely gonna complain. But I added 
my self-signed certificate, and now I have my domain on Azure DNS, and I'll just add my domain and subdomain. I'll review and create, and guess what? This is not deploying to the cluster. This is adding to our repository and running our pipeline again after submitting the pull request. So I'm happy with that, and you can actually see exactly what it's generating. It's generating the whole ingress file for you. It deployed the add-on, configured the ingress controller, configured external DNS for DNS configuration automatically. So it's actually configuring Azure DNS for you. You deployed it, and you already see the hosts right there. And you can now actually access our application worldwide, deployed with Fleet in two different regions. As simple as that. Not bad, not bad. Yes, you can clap. Yes, you can clap. Thank you so much. <laughs> not bad for a day's work, I, I would assume. But there's one more thing. Everything I just did was actually under the covers done with Confidential. Remember that I told there was a lot of actually privacy requirements that our teams had. And one of those challenges that my team has had over the years, the Contoso team, is that in order to use confidential architecture, I had to know a lot. I had to use SDKs. I had to go on and change my applications. Not going to fly. So we've been partnering with the Conf Azure Confidential team, with the Open Infra Foundation, the CATA project. And we're really, really happy to announce the public preview of confidential containers, leveraging CATA containers, that actually enables any application anywhere without any code changes to start leveraging confidential infrastructure. You just Deploy that to AKS in a node pool that is enabled for confidential uh, VMs. Leverage our new runtime, and that is it. You don't need any changes to the application, any changes to code, and your teams don't need to know anything about this at all. Just pretty amazing that you didn't realize that everything that I just did was in a confidential environment. So. I said a lot of things that maybe, oh, you don't need to know a lot. You just let go with it. But there might be a lot of things that you actually want to start learning more about. You might want to skill up. And so you might have heard Scott announce today, this morning as well, the Microsoft Copilot for Azure, which actually helps you with exactly that. It helps you by enabling you to have an assistant that helps you with daily tasks, that helps you skill up, that helps you troubleshoot, design, build, deploy. And we basically were so happy to preview this at Build um, a few months ago. And we're even more ecstatic that now all of Azure has the exact same capabilities. So thank you so much. I'm going to hand off now to your, the capable hands of Devanchi, who's going to talk to you about our serverless updates. Thank you. That was great. Thanks, George. Thank you, George. Hello, everyone. I'm Devanchi Joshi, Product Marketing Manager for Serverless and Azure. Well, everyone in this room belongs to the world of tech where generative AI is inspiring revolutionary innovation. So now Kubernetes has been the de facto application platform and you are powering that data of yours enriched with AI and now you just need that application front end to activate it. Well, serverless fits right there with Kubernetes for that activation. So rapid development and event-driven scale combined with workflow orchestration sets you up to achieve faster time to market with serverless development and in particular functions as a service. Azure Functions offers you built-in triggers and bindings for easy integrations across apps, data, and AI with seamless inner loop and outer loop experience and the hosting option of your choice. Its built-in integrated programming model and bindings enable you to rapidly build intelligent applications, supporting a variety of your needs within your apps, and pr processing your data events right from real time, as well as workflow orchestration, and also your connected devices backends. So as you build and train your models on AKS, like George just showed us and the amazing Kaito AI toolchain operator along with it, you can build serverless endpoints to support chatbots or AI assistants with Azure OpenAI, bring your own data, process it, and store it in vector databases for retrieval augmented generation, or RAG, build functions as plugins for generative AI platforms like OpenAI, or pass data in the right format for training your models. 
Now, secure network boundary is critical for enterprise solution development. And having autonomy for compute size selection offers you the needs for your different app needs. So today, I'm excited to share with you that we are bringing these enterprise capabilities to the serverless model with Azure Functions that is more powerful than ever for bus scale to support your intelligent app development needs. Okay, so. I'm happy to announce the Azure Functions Flex Consumption Plan, Microsoft Azure's flagship serverless offering as with Azure Functions is bringing you new flexibility with private networking and longer execution time. It builds on the consumption serverless billing model where you can now run your uh, event-driven apps with higher throughput, increased reliability, better performance, and added security for your intelligent app enterprise needs. So joining me on stage is now Thiago to take you through how Azure Functions on Flex Consumption is the best companion to your intelligent app on Azure Kubernetes service. All right, I'm uh, Thiago Meida. I'm a program manager on the Azure Functions team, and I'm happy to tell you a little bit more about the upcoming Functions Flex Consumption hosting plan. As you can see here, um, George's pet store is becoming very popular and we are building a solution to handle customer feedback that is very variable. Sometimes there's none, sometimes there's quite a lot coming in at the same time, and we're gonna handle those with Azure Functions Flex Consumption. Uh, we're gonna send that downstream to event hubs to be processed into the main uh, model that is hosted on AKS later. Uh, all of that between functions and event hubs is happening behind a virtual network. So let's see it in action. Okay, so as you can see here, I have um, a typical .NET isolated Azure function. It takes in an HTTP request and processes customer feedback. We're creating some embeddings from the feedback and then using the typical Azure function output bindings to send that data down to event hubs. So I've previously deployed my app, my that code to this uh, Flex Consumption app right here. And let's have a look at Application Insights who is, that is hooked up to my function. If I go to Live Metrics, uh, we can see that there's nothing there because it's scaled down to zero. There's, there's no activity on my function. But let's change that. I'm gonna kick off a couple of uh, load tests here. One is using Azure Load Testing. It's gonna send quite a lot of HTTP requests with uh, customer feedback. And I'm also gonna kick off, just for fun, a loader.io test to have both of them sending data. While those are kicking off, uh, I just wanted to show you here my event hub's namespace where the function is sending the data into, as you remember. In the networking tab, you'll see that public access is completely disabled and not even allowed Microsoft Trusted Services to bypass that firewall. But it, of course, it's, connect, it's configured with a private endpoint so that we, uh, the function can still reach it by a VNet integration. So it is a truly serverless consumption plan, but now we are allowing networking uh, into it. So as you can see here, I have a VNet integration into my app uh, so that functions can reach that event hubs. Well, let's have a look at the application insights now. As you can see, we've uh, scaled into quite a lot of servers already quite quickly to handle from zero requests per second to 20,000 requests per second. That's one of the loads already kicking off. And pretty soon the second one would uh, kick in and Azure Functions would scale up once more. I've run this before uh, just recently, so I will show you here uh, a graph that probably gives you a better understanding. We were at zero, all of a sudden there's a lot of customer feedback coming in. It scaled up to 101 in a few seconds and then the second load kicked in again, and we're at 176. As soon as that load is done, we scaled in very quickly. The second load test finished here, and we scaled down to zero. And then, of course, they're not paying anymore for those uh, instances. And just to have a look here, the load test is still going, and fast consumption is keeping track of all of those thousands of executions uh, that are coming in uh, for my application. So. 
With that, I'll hand it back to Devanshi. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Tiago. All right. I love those scale up happen. It's amazing. So, um, serverless event driven architectures, when part of Kubernetes based solutions, offer cost optimized seamless processing for your data and event sources. Azure Container Apps is an event driven serverless containers platform that builds on cloud native and open source components like Azure Kubernetes Service, Dapper, Keda, and Envoy. While AKS, with AKS, you're getting this amazing managed Kubernetes clusters experience, providing full access to that underlying API for your control, flexibility, and configuration. But if you do not need your solution to have full access to be managing and controlling those APIs and configurations, Azure Container Apps offers you a great event-driven serverless containers platform to build your intelligent microservices. A high productivity development experience. So when you're evaluating your project needs, you choose from the different variety of services we have here rarely available, and you make your informed decision. And today, we are happy to share with you new advancements in Azure Container Apps. GPU workload profiles, vector database add-ons, cloud build and resiliency in preview, and landing zone accelerators in GA, all offering new capabilities to support enterprise intelligent application needs. With GPU-enabled workload profiles, you build flexible microservice-based intelligent applications or data pipelines or leverage GPUs for inferencing, training, or building those compute-intensive workloads, all while balancing cost. Combine that ease of use of container apps and vector database add-ons for Quadrant, MIFIS, VV8, offering that self-service platform for data scientists as well as developers across all experience levels. Enjoy that easy code integration and onboarding with no Docker or container knowledge previously. And thanks to Container App's new cloud build capabilities along with CNCF build packs, even developers brand new to cloud native can get started, build, and run their applications as they ramp up. Now I invite Simon to take us through a musical experience for a deep dive demo on building intelligent microservices on Azure Container Apps. Thanks, Devanji. Um, okay, so we are going to um, talk through this scenario first, and then we will actually do the live wi high wire act of building this. Um, so today, we're going to be building a music recommendation service. Um, on your right-hand side, uh, we have all the ingredients that a data scientist would need. Um, in this case, we're processing music. Uh, and we're going to be using what data science scientists prefer to work in uh, a Jupyter notebook to actually process and iterate through uh, essentially creating embeddings. Embeddings, I'm sure you've heard this now. Um, they're very nebulous, but you can think of them as fingerprints. Um, it brings down all these assets into things that can be compared with each other and basically returned. We're going to be storing those embeddings in the new vector database add-on that we've just added to ACA, container apps. Uh, in this case, Quadrant. Um, little shout out to the team there. Um, excellent product and very comfortable to use. And if we get the time, we can actually see how powerful that can be. And then on the left-hand side, we have a traditional application developer. Um, in this case, uh, we're going to be using a traditional backend. And then as Devanshi stated, uh, we will actually have a Java developer that has never used containers before and will bring a jar to this equation to basically um, deliver the front end. And just before I got on stage, I was told that my computer was making a not interesting sad face, and that's what's actually happening. So let me go and fix this before we get into this. And I think we are back where we left off. OK. So with that, I'm going to switch over. Cool. So 
um, data scientists are not very actually uh, infrastructure focused. So um, what's important or what's nice about ACA container apps is that this is, becomes a self-service operation. Uh, they can essentially choose their own container image. Um, these are things that they probably do on their desktops, and so this becomes available and accessible to them, and then they can very easily also choose CPU, uh, GPUs because they need to crank through some details very quickly. These embeddings are very costly to do, and so this is available to them. And then best of all, there is the ability for them to actually go and bring in this vector database and just connect to it very easily. This is due to the add-on and the bindings that you can really uh, create through the creation process. So I'm going to kick this off and do some TV kitchen here. Uh, so surprise, surprise, I already have this stood up. Um, and so we're going to go through here. This is my Jupyter notebook. I have this connected at this point, And I'm going to just go through here and you know, do some imports. I'm going to load our data set. I'm going to kind of sample and see what we have to deal with here, right? Like uh, maybe check out the music that we're operating on, make sure that it loads properly. And then we're actually going to go and generate these embeddings here. Um, and uh, so this is kicking off. We're not going to wait. Even on GPU, this takes between one and a half and three hours to process. Uh, if you compare this to additional CPU, this would be between 15 uh, hours and 30 hours to actually process. We're going to just do um, another TV kitchen moment here in a little bit, and these are all going to be done. But, you know, let's assume these are done. Data scientist has done his work. We're going to be handing this off to our traditional app developer. So he can come in here. He has a, well, now you get to see it. Um, he gets to, uh, he comes in here and he basically sees, uh, you know, I'm going to go and have my back end here. It's maybe pre-deployed already, right? And so they can come in here and basically say, well, let me go and connect to this same add-on that was just released and filled with these beautiful embeddings. Uh, and so, you know, very easily. Um, this is going to do uh, deploy a, a new revision, and we are now connecting these add-ons back into this environment that we're basically now interacting with. And um, now we're going to kick off the last process. Java developer comes in. He's going to go and deploy his front end here. Um, this is going to run, and while this runs, I'm going to just recap the full scenario here. And then we're going to see what this recommendation service actually looks like. Um, so what we just saw was um, we went, used some GPU, very easily available. We can sunset that when we don't need it anymore. Um, we used the vector database. It's right within the environment, fast, easy, and cheap to use. And then uh, we're going to use uh, source to cloud for someone that has never used container, doesn't have Docker, nothing installed. And so the end result of this is our recommendation service. And so we can just, you know, pick a song here, click on it, play the song, get the recommendations. You can see the score. The vector database produces this for us already. This is a single line of code. And here you go, pretty close. And that's it. Back to you, Devanchi. All right, so it is your time to modernize and bring your apps to market faster using AI and Kubernetes on Azure with built-in security and a diverse application ecosystem across data, AI, and observability. These amazing services you saw today, AKS, Container Apps, Fleet Manager, Azure Functions, incorporate them and build your intelligent app platform. And when you're ready to get started, use Azure Migrate and Modernize and Azure Innovate offers and program to, for additional resources, some funding covering a variety of scenarios. Thank you for joining us today. Here are your resources to take away and tomorrow at 9 a.m. There is a session breakout for platform engineering. Do join us there, it is highly recommended. So master platform engineering, architecting scalable and resilient systems. See you tomorrow. Have a great rest of Ignite. Thank you.